In this lesson, we will perform some manual dependency injection in order to gain a working level knowledge of the dependency injection pattern in Spring. So let's imagine that our client is in the business of renting DVDs and video games. The client has asked us to evaluate their rental service class and apply some dependency injection principles. Looking at the class, we see it has a public find method. The find method is used to locate a store that has a particular title. The method has a dependency on a store locator variable, and we see that our store locator variable is declared within our class as a field. The field is a tightly coupled dependency of the rental service class because it is instantiated using the new operator and the store locator constructor. We will use the dependency injection pattern to eliminate this hard dependency and reduce the coupling between the rental service and store locator classes. I normally follow three rules to apply the dependency injection pattern. The first is to identify your dependencies. Now since we have already pointed out that the store locator is our main dependency, we can move on to the second rule. The second rule is to define abstractions for your dependencies. Now when I say an abstraction, I'm talking about an interface or an abstract class. So let's evaluate the store locator class. Within the store locator class, we see a find method which takes a string and an int as an argument. We would like to place this method on our interface. We can abstract an interface from the store locator using the Eclipse shortcut extract interface. Now I'm going to name our interface source locator because the interface will serve as a type that is used to locate a title within our company's library of DVDs and video games. We'll make sure that we check the checkbox to include the find method which accepts the arguments of type int and string. After we extract the interface, we can see that the store locator implements the source locator interface. We can view the interface and see that it contains a find method which takes a zip code as a string and a search radius as an integer. So let's head back to our rental service class and we can now work to apply the third rule. The third rule is to inject implementations of your dependency. To apply this rule, I must first eliminate the new operator and the store locator constructor. You can see that when we abstracted the interface, our dependencies type is now the source locator interface. We still need to provide an implementation of that dependency. To do that, I'm going to create a constructor using the field. So now we have a rental service constructor that takes an argument of type source locator and assigns that argument to our field named store locator, which is of type source locator. Now I'm going to take a minute to correct the name of that field so it's a little bit more intuitive. We'll change that to source locator. Now having made this change, we can now inject whatever implementation of the source locator interface we would like to the rental service as dependency. We have decoupled the rental service from the concrete store locator implementation. You will notice that as I save this change, our application class no longer compiles. That is because we were using the default constructor and we must now use the rental service constructor that accepts the source locator dependency. So I'm going to inject an instance of the store locator as our dependency. Now let's see why this approach is so beneficial. Let's imagine the company has informed us they will be using kiosks to rent titles instead of brick and mortar stores. We're going to create a new implementation of the source locator. So we'll create a new class and we'll call this class kiosk locator and we'll make sure that we implement the source locator interface and we'll create our class. To save time, I'm going to grab the implementation of the store locator. 
and we'll just place that into the kiosk locator. And then I'll change some of these titles so we know we're using the kiosk locator. So we'll call that kiosk A, kiosk B, and kiosk C. So we have a new implementation of the source locator, and we have our store locator implementation. And within our application, we're currently injecting the store locator implementation into the rental service. Let's quickly run our application. And if you look at the console at the bottom, you can see that we have found Forrest Gump at some brick and mortar stores. Now let's imagine that we wanted to switch to the kiosk because our company would like to implement that business change. So all we do is simply switch the dependency that we are injecting. And once we have that dependency switched, you can see now we're finding Forrest Gump at kiosk. By injecting our application's dependencies, we made it flexible enough to handle a substantial change without modifying the code in the rental service. This is often referred to as the open-close principle, and that states that objects should be open for extension but closed for modification. This concept is primarily driven by the fact that we used an interface or an abstraction as the type of our dependency, and that was within our rental service class where we used the abstraction. So dependency injection is a pretty simple concept. Objects should have their dependencies injected into them instead of creating them. In our example, we use constructor injection. However, there are many other ways to inject dependencies. For example, you can use setters. As we learn about Spring, you will work with the other types of dependency injection.